Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy, and today we're going to go in depth of the Everything Money software and everything that I use to get value out of this software to be able to determine the value of an individual company. So, starting, we'll stick with Apple since we uh, used it on the last video. So, we're just on the metrics tab. I can see the market cap of the company. Take share price multiplied by the total shares outstanding to get a total market cap of 2.47 trillion. I can see the revenue year to date, net income year to date, price divided by earnings year to date, the five year price to earnings ratio, the profit margin, five year average profit margin, gross, mar gross profit margin, Price to sales ratio. Now, price to sales is simply you got to invest six point three nine dollar or six dollars and thirty nine cents for every dollar of revenue that Apple generates. I can see their year to date free cash flow. Now, free cash flow is just the bottom line profit of the company after all expenses. Now they can use that free cash flow to buy back shares, pay dividends, pay off debt, reinvest into the business, and I'm sure there's some other stuff, but that's in a sense what a company can do with free cash flow. I also see their five year average free cash flow. I can see they pay a small dividend. Now, with any dividend company, I want to make sure that their dividends paid isn't taking too much of that free cash flow. In Apple's scenario, it doesn't take up too much of it. That is beautiful. That is what I want to see in a dividend company. Now, I'd also want to know what the dividend growth of that company is. But that may be for another video when we're talking about an individual dividend company. Uh, moving right along, return. you can see their return on assets, return on equity, their return on invested capital year to date five-year average return on invested capital, their five-year book growth, and 10-year book growth. So going to the eight pillar process that Everything Money teaches. We're going to go over each one of these pillars and then we will wrap this video up. So the first pillar, they want their five-year average price to earnings ratio to be under 22.5. Right now it's sitting at 35 and a half. Now I can see their five-year average PE right here, right on the metrics tab, 35.65. Next pillar, five-year return on invested capital. They want it to be greater than nine. Apple currently sits at 33.4. I can see it right here on the metrics tab. Revenue growth over the last five years. Go into the income statement five years ago, 220 to 240 billion roughly in that window. Now they're at 386 billion. Okay, that is there is revenue growth there. Net income growth, same thing. I can go into the income statement five years ago, right around that 50 billion. Now they're sitting at 101 billion. There's revenue growth, or not revenue growth, net income growth. Shares outstanding. You want the company to be buying back shares. If the company has 10 shares and you own one of those shares, you own 10% of the business. Now let's say the company buys back five of those 10 shares. Now you own 20% of the business. Now let's say they issue 10 shares and now there's 20 shares total. You still own one share. Now you only own 5% of the business. This is why you want your companies to be buying back shares. You don't want to be getting diluted. And to find that, you can go into their income statement, go to their shares outstanding. I can see over the last five years, they've gone from 20 billion to 16 billion. 0.28 billion. Moving right along, long term liabilities LTL divided by five year free cash flow. Now they want this number, this calculation right here, to be under five. In Apple's scenario, they're at 2.06. If you don't know how to calculate that, you go into the balance sheet, go to total long term liabilities of 155. 155 billion. So we're going to take 155 billion, 155 divided by the five-year free cash flow. Here is the five-year free cash flow of 75 billion. So we're going to divide that by 75 billion, and that is where they get this calculation on this number. It shows it right here. This basically shows that it takes about two years of their average free cash flow to pay off their total long-term liabilities. Now you want your company, especially in 
today's time with rising interest rates, you want your companies to be able to pay off their debts and be sitting sitting uh, in a good spot, especially coming into a lot of these rate hikes. You want the companies to be able to pay off their long-term debts. Moving right along, cash flow growth over the last five years. So I'd go to the cash flow statement. I look at the cash flow. Free cash flow. Now over the last five years, they were roughly right around that 50 billion. Now they're at 100 billion, 105 billion. There is growth over the last five years. That's what they're looking for. And the last metric, the five-year price to free cash flow. So they take the five-year price to free cash flow, and they want this ratio to be under 32. This is just the valuation metric. So pillars eight and one are valuation. Pillar number six is your debt. Pillar number five is your shares outstanding. Pillar number two, their return on invest capital. And pillars three and four are just revenue and net income growth. And that is a brief overall example of the Everything Money software process and what they teach. I hope you guys enjoy the video and I will see you on the next one.